Hi everyone, this is Jan. And what I have for you today is a little painting I did a couple of years ago. And what I want to show you how to do is to do a makeover. And my plan is to do a different background around the flowers using the mop brush and then I'm going to redo these leaves here and I'm going to show you how to do mop brush leaves. Now I haven't quite decided if I want to redo the roses here that I have. I'll just have to think about it as I go along and see if maybe I want to change them or not. Now you can see this little video on how to do these white ruffled roses. I have a YouTube on it. So you just scroll down a little bit further and you'll see the video. And it will show you how I did the painting as it is now. So let me get the background on. But I wanted you to see what it looks like before I even start this. And then when we come back, I'll show you the new background. And then I'll also show you how to do the mop brush leaves. You're going to be really surprised at how you can do a makeover painting on any painting that you have done previous. All right. I'll see you in a few. So what does everyone think? I know I like this background a lot better than the other one. And all I did was take the mop brush and I used a lavender close to this color. I didn't put any yellow in, in the background and I picked up some uh, turquoise or teal color. But what I did first was paint it in a gray and white all over and then while it was still wet I came back with the mop brush and I put the turquoise and the lavender in and you're just doing little crisscross strokes and if I wanted to paint to lay on the top more then instead of using my brush this way almost like a straight up and down and doing a rough blend I used a soft br uh, blend and you just set your brush kind of off flat and you blend that way and then what that does is it doesn't pull the paint off of your canvas it'll just lay on top and then when you come over it again it will just blend it out these mop brushes are basically uh, whenever we were doing oils they were called blender brushes and what you would do is lay in your color and then you would come back with a soft blend brush like a mop brush and then you blend your colors and edges together and that's what gives you a really soft look so that's what i do with the acrylics i'm painting in acrylics exactly like i painted when i worked with oils the only difference is is i have to use some slow dries some uh blending gels, some maybe even a little bit of water uh, in order to keep my background or whatever I'm painting. I have to keep it wet whenever I paint it. So that's the only difference and I'm showing you all of these little techniques that I do to keep your paintings looking like oils. Okay, now the next step I will come back and we will go ahead and do these leaves here, these big leaves. And we're going to do them with the mop brush. They're going to be so pretty. You're really going to be surprised. Okay, I'll see you in a few. Alright, so we're ready to start our leaves. And I'm going to do this little leaf down here. I have a little filbert brush here. Uh, just use one small enough to where that'll fit in your leaf area. 
I like to work with a round brush on, you know, the filbert or rounds on the edges or cat's tongue. And the first thing I did was pick up a little bit of blending gel. I have some on my plate here. And as you can see, I worked it into my brush. Then I'm going to pick up a green. Now I'm going to block in color here just like I would if I was doing oils, but we're working in acrylics. I have a dark green, a medium green, and a light green. Doesn't matter what color you have, just make sure you have three different values here. So the first color that I start with is usually the dark color. But what I want to do also is come in and do my little outline here. So I'm going to pick up some paint, pulling it out from the edge here. And this leaf here, I covered it up whenever I was uh, doing the background. So let's add it back in. Let's see where we're going to go with this leaf here. I'm just kind of sketching it in like that. So what I want to do is put the dark color, and I'm just going to block in some color here. Which means you're not blending or anything, you're just taking a color, your dark green. You're going to block it in. And of course I want to keep it wet. Okay. Now wipe your brush on a paper towel to both sides. Pick up your medium color, do the same thing. I'm going to blend, do a little bit of gel on that. All right, blocking in this medium color. I'm just going to softly chop blend it into the dark green. You can do it a little sloppy. We're going to come back over this with a, the blender brush. Okay, wipe the brush on a paper towel both sides. Pick up a little bit of the light green. Just pick up a little gel. Work it in, and then I, think I might have that run right off of that canvas. Okay. Now, softly chop blend the edges where they meet. Okay. Colors are blocked in. Now, set that brush aside. I'm going to pick up my mop brush. Okay, my mop brush. Let's pick up a little of the blending gel in the mop brush. I have it over here and load both sides. Let's see. Let's see if you can see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> here it is over here. I'm just pulling it out and I'm loading both sides of the mop brush. Mop brush has been dampened, blotted, and fluffed out. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting it into a chisel edge. Let's see where can I go? There you go. See that chisel edge? All right, and then I am going to come in with some of the lighter color. Now, if you're doing this leaf and let's say your light source is coming from the right here, this side here, you would want to do your leaf over stroke in a light color. Over here, you might do it in the medium color. Let's go ahead and do the light color. So I'm going to load my brush up with some light right here, the light green. Okay, and I'm just checking to make sure my green is still wet here. So let's go over here and you're going to touch the edge. Yes, touch the edge right here and pull to the center. Touch and pull up to the center. You're going to see that that is uh, making a little feather stroke. See, now here's the vein. Let's put this in. Okay, there's the vein. I need a little more gel in that. And I'm going to dip in just a little bit of water to make it a little more fluid. There we go. Touch and pull. Pull some of your strokes close to the center part here. And some of them you can leave further down. So that you have a uh, gradual blend on that. Okay? You don't want a hard edge on that. Okay? Wipe your brush down. Let's pick up a little bit of 
the medium green. I'm going to pick up a, just the corner of that brush and a little bit of water. I want a little fluid instead of the gel. Okay, this side's almost almost dry. So I'm going to touch here. We're at a 45 degree angle here. So touch into the center and pull. Yeah, that is really dry. Okay, let's get some gel. Touch and pull in. Okay, see that little feathered stroke right there? Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Now what I can do is come back and add the feathered stroke from the vein out to the side here. Now what I will do on the next one is I will add the blending gel first. So I'm kind of kind of trying it three different ways here. Okay, there we go. What I want is a really nice little blend on that. I'm going to wipe my brush on a paper towel both sides. Okay, let's pick up a little bit more of the light green and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the water on my brush. Now, I wouldn't have to do this if I had the gel on first. But I want to show you three different ways of doing these. Touch, pull, touch, pull. See that made a lighter stroke on that. Okay? Then this other side will have the medium side. I can even come back and add a little bit of the light to that. Now if you get it too light, you can come back and I can go over this chisel edge I did and shorten it up a little bit, make it skinnier. And then as I come down here, I can make it a little bit darker. Okay. There we go. You can also add a vein to it too. A little vein here. So you can separate. Just be sure your brush has a chisel edge when you do that. Alright? You can play with this as you want to. But that's how you would do your little blended leaf down here. Okay? Your overstroke mop brush leaf. Now I'm going to come over here and I will go ahead and do the other leaf. Now this leaf up here, we're going to do a little differently. This leaf here, I have added blending gel around on the leaf and around, oh probably quarter of an inch past where I have the leaf drawn out. This leaf down here that I did was done pretty much dry uh, brush. I did not add any blending gel underneath this prior to doing it. But I did add it to this right here because this was pretty dry whenever I was trying to do the overstroke. So for this one we're going to do the same thing. I am going to use a dark green and we want to block in where we want the dark green. Don't worry about the petals there. What I'll do is come back over and redo those. Now one thing you have to remember when you start using this blending gel, you have to make sure your background and everything is dry everything is dry on the canvas before you put the blending gel on, okay? Okay, that's on. Wipe the brush on both sides. Paper towel. Pick up medium green here. Let's have the medium green. Light source is coming over here, so we're going to have the medium green on the right side here. I have a line drawn here. 
Okay, on the right side here. Clean off the brush both sides. Pick up some of the light green. And block in the light green side over here. Just blocking in color. Button those colors right up next to one another. Kind of fuse blend them together just a little bit. It can be messy, sloppy, because we're going to come over with uh, the brush. The mop brush. And we're going to correct all of that. It's fun just to mix different colors in here. Alright, set that brush aside. Pick up our mop brush. Just making sure it's nice and fluffy there. And I want to get this in a chisel edge. It's a little bit damp because I cleaned it out. And that's okay. So now on this side here, I'm going to pick up some of the light green. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of water in that. And I'm going to load the light green on both sides. I want this somewhat kind of fluid. Not watery, but kind of fluid. But you want to be sure you can get that brush in a chisel edge. See that edge? Okay. So let's come back in here. And I'm going to start at the top here. And we're going to touch and pull to the center there. Maybe not even all the all the way. We're going to edge this. Let me tilt this up a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. So I'm going to touch it. Pull. Touch. Pull. Touch. Pull. Touch. Pull. All the way back. Okay. Now, I'm going to add. That's too light for me. Let's add a little bit of the medium color here. That uh, first green was a little too light for me. I couldn't see it very well. Okay, now we have the dark side. So I'm going to add a little bit of this medium green. Load my brush. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay, let me move it over here. I'm going to touch. I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to touch and pull in. We're going to see if that shows up. And it doesn't show up, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the lighter green. Touch and pull. Touch and pull. Touch, pull. See that feather stroke? How it will come in to your center part here. Okay. Let's swing that in just a little bit more. There we go. I can even add a vein while I'm doing it. Let's see, I can add a vein coming in here. Add more of a point. Add a stem. Now, if I want to highlight that just a little more, I have some white here. Let's load up this with a little white. Let's edge some of these edges right here on the light side. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, touch. Touch right here at the edge. Pull in. There we go. Yeah. Okay, light, light touch. Hardly any touch at all. Alright, let's add a little turquoise in that. A little turquoise, let's see, turquoise and a little white. See, I might have got too much white there. I want that turquoise to show. See, I have a little turquoise. Let's try a little turquoise over here now. As long as it's still wet when you look at it and tilt it. If it's shiny, it's still wet a little bit. So I'm going to touch a little bit of this turquoise. There we go. You see that turquoise? You probably can't see it very well, but uh, I can see it a lot better um, looking at it. It's just barely, barely that turquoise. Well, let's see if I can get that just a little deeper, okay? Touch. 
This is the same stroke that you use when you do your flowers. Same one. Except we're doing it etching the leaves. I love this overstroke. I've been doing it for 50 years. There you go. So you see, this is more of a, I call it more of a decorative painting. Decorative painting leaf. You know when they used to do toll and decorative painting? It's more like that. And I just, just love a leaf like that. It's so pretty. All right, now our last leaf is this one over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that leaf. Okay, for this leaf, I am using the slow dry medium, the Windsor Newton. And I'm testing all three ways of doing a leaf. This one is just using paint and doing the overstrokes while the paint is wet. This one I put down some blending gel before I started. Then put the paint down. Don't let it dry while it's wet. And this one I have a coat of the slow dry. I'm trying all three and I'm going to see which one I like the best. So this one here, I want to go into the dark green. Okay, and we're going to block in our dark green. Now the leaf will be uh, darker close to the flower because the petals will shade back here. Wipe the brush on a paper towel, go into the medium green. Remember, our light source is coming from the right over here. So I want the medium color to be over here on the left side. And you can just lay this in real sloppy. Kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly on the edges here because you're going to mop brush the edges. All right, wipe your brush down. Take the light color. Lock in your light color over here. This is the right side. And Lucy, block it in. Okay. Yes, sir. Remember, we have a vine or, or a vein right here. Right here in the center. Oops. Picked up a little dark and it got in there. Just rough chop that. Okay. Set this brush aside. We have our mop brush. Here's our mop brush. I pinched it into a chisel edge here. And for this side over here, we are going to use the light green. I'm going to add some white to it. Get my mop brush here. Now, if your paint is pulling with you, what you can do is dip in your slow dry. Dip your brush in a little bit of the slow dry. Work it in both edges here until you get a chisel edge. Okay. There we go. Okay, I have color on it. Now I'm going to start at the tip up here. I'm going to touch right here on the edge. See, touch. Pull in. Touch. Pull in. Touch, pull in, touch, pull in. We're kind of at an angle. You know, kind of like a half C. Ooh, that looks neat. See how that pulled in? When I had the dark there, it pulled in some dark. Okay. That's okay. Now, wipe the brush down. Okay, now I'm going to pull into some of the green. I'm going to add a little white to that green. And do the same thing. We're going to touch up here, pull in, touch, pull in, touch, pull in. Okay, see how it's kind of a, I don't want to say a 
sea stroke, but it has a bend in it, okay? Like that. We still have our vein down here. There we go, the vein. Now, when you come back, it's still damp. It's, it's still shiny. Now, wipe the brush off, and I can pick up some of these other colors. I'm going to pick up a little lavender here. And we are going to add a little lavender to that. Let's add it over on this edge because my flower is over here. Okay, let's add a little white to that. Let's lighten that up a little bit. Okay. Touch and pull. That's what you want. Touch and pull. Okay, so we have a little lavender there. Now on this side over here, just going to wipe the brush on both sides. We want a little turquoise. I'm just loading with a little turquoise. A little bit of white in it. Both sides. Dirty brush. Okay, so let's pick up a little turquoise. There we go. I like that color right there. So up here I need a darker color. So the Vein will show. So here. Ooh. Press too hard on that. Okay. And what we can do is come back and we can take our edge of our brush and chisel that out. It's a little damp on that edge, so you can just take it and chisel that out. Oh, just run your brush right there and then pull out. Pull out, pull out, so you don't have a double vein there. Okay, and that will shorten your or not make your vein so wide. Okay, and you can come back in and we can go ahead Put in our veins. You don't have to put in the veins, but um, they're kind of fun, kind of different to put in. All right, let's flip this. Let's see, this is the top. Okay, everyone, what do you think? Isn't that a neat way to do a makeover? <laughs> now, I know it looks kind of scruffy, around these edges here of the flowers. So what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll go ahead and redo just those top edges and I'll show you how to do that with an angle brush. It'll be real easy. We're just going to use a little floating medium and a little bit of white on our edge and we'll have it in tip-top shape here. Okay, I'll see you in just a few. Okay, everyone, we are finished with this. I have taken an angle brush here, and I have went over some of my strokes to clean up the edges here. Uh, whenever I did the background, you know, I got a little bit of background color and a little bit of leaf color. So I just took this angle brush here, and I just went back over this with floating medium and some white, and redid some of these strokes on here. Well, I like this painting a lot better now since I did its little makeover. Now, I also want to show you uh, the brushes I'm using, and I was very impressed with this brush here that came in this protege kit that you can get on Amazon. This was a link that Gilbert uh, gave on his website and I decided uh, to try them out. Uh, it's 15 piece brush set for acrylics and they're about $24. And I really like them. They're very nice brushes. Of course all I've used was the angle brush uh, to do the strokes on the uh, flowers and 
it had a really good um, spring to it. Um, it did a really nice stroke. I was very impressed with this brush. And in this brush kit, you're going to get round brushes, fan brushes, rake brush. You have some brights in there. And you have your flat brushes. You have your wash brushes. You have two sizes of angles. And you have a couple of filbert brushes in here. Okay, so I will post a link for the brushes. I will post a link for the slow dries and blending gels. And I will also post a link for this fabulous mop brush that I use to do the leaves. And I also have a YouTube video up on how to do mop brush roses. So the links will all be down in there in the description box. Uh, if you already have brushes, then use the brushes that you already have. Use the paint you already have. But if you don't, near a beginner, this is a nice set that you can you can get. Uh, also, on the paints, what I used today was the Arteza. The Arteza brand paints. And these paints here, let me... It's Arteza. You can get these on Amazon also. I got a big box of Arteza paints for 20 some dollars and it comes in a kit and it it has 20 bottles of paint. Let me show you right here. That's what it looks like, Arteza. It is also a multi-surface paint. You can paint it on different surfaces. As far as the quality of the paint, the quality of the paint, you can see here, this is what I used right here. Uh, the quality of the paint is very good. It's not a watered down brand. It is a heavier body acrylic that you can use. Um, so you can use it with your slow dries and blending gels and your floating mediums. Uh, but yeah, I was... I was very impressed with this too. I'm not an affiliate of any of these products. I'm just showing you uh, some of the products that I've used to finish out this little painting. And if you're a beginner and you want to get some supplies to start painting with, then I'll have all the links down there below for you in my description box. Okay, also if you'd like to learn how to paint this little painting, I am starting Zoom classes in May. I'm taking sign-ups for those who might want to start learning how to do uh, florals or landscapes. And I'll be teaching in acrylics or oils. And I have a Facebook group and I put my paintings on there. Uh, you can choose any paintings that you want to start with. And we just go week to week work on a little bit at a time. You're not pushed to do a two hour or three hour class and finish the painting. You can take as long as you want to to finish the painting. We'll go real slow and you'll do something and I'll, you'll just hold it up to the, the screen there and I can see what you're doing and if we need to change something we can change it right there. I'm not going to leave you out in the cold there and just say this is how you do it. Good luck. Okay, so thank you for joining me for this little makeover painting. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you do some of your makeover paintings that you have behind your closet door or, or behind uh, your little, I have mine in my hallway, stacked in my hallway on the floor. I don't have much room uh, to put these little paintings. So anyway, have fun doing it, and I'm glad I could help you out here. So till next time. Take care and bye for now.